Let's see if I can find the right button on this. Okay, so hello. Uh, as you know, there are lots of cell phones around. There's an estimate. I am pressing the right button. <laughs> okay, there's an estimate 4 billion mobile phones in use in the world nowadays. And I press the right button again. We use them for all sorts of things. We use them to make calls, of course, and we use them uh, to manage our contacts, to send and receive messages. They're our faithful companion. They're always with us. We've grown to depend on them. But they do have a problem. They're an inherently visual device. We need to look at the screen when we're doing something in order to be reassured that we're doing the right thing. And this is especially true for text entry. We need to look and see that we're writing the correct thing. We can usually do this pretty well, but what about users that can see only <laughs> this? And this is a slide. This is not a technology <laughs> okay. So. Blind people do have a hard time using mobile phones. Uh, the, design, the interaction wasn't designed with them in mind. And this leads to all sorts of problems. Uh, this isn't a slide. All sorts of problems, uh, not the least of which social exclusion, because mobile phones are one of the main ways of communicating with others nowadays. And um, we set out to help these people uh, to interact better. And to do so, we look at what we know about them. And being blind people, we know they can read Braille. And uh, this is a Braille cell. There you go. Uh, so this is a Braille cell. Different combinations of raised dots in this matrix represent different characters. And we thought that we could superimpose this cell. This is going to be hard. And another one. For, OK, so we can try to superimpose this cell on to the mobile phone's keyboards, and then by pressing different combinations of keys, the users would be able to write in Braille, which would help them enter text. We called this Braille tap, and we set out to test this. So we went to Fundação Raquel e Martin Sign, which is a foundation that has been around for some decades to help blind people cope with their disability. And we performed some user studies, and we were hoping to get really great results. But in reality, uh, this didn't happen because Remember that thing about blind people knowing how to read Braille? Well, that's not actually true. Because uh, we tend to stereotype blind people as being some kind of Superman that has heightened senses, a heightened sense of touch in particular to cope with lack of vision. But in truth, people become blind for all sorts of reasons, and many people become blind due to old age and related diseases, diabetes, for instance. Or they become blind from accidents. So, not so fast. Which means that, unlike those that are, that are born blind, m many blind people never get to learn or become proficient with Braille. The lesson here is that we cannot be based on stereotypes to uh, develop these kinds of things. We must really go out there and uh, take into consideration the huge diversity of people and really get to know them and their real problems in order to solve good solutions. So in this regard, BrailleTap was a dead end. And we went back to the drawing board and tried to see what we can really assure is true for blind people in this context. And since they're trying to enter text on their mobile phone, of course, they'll have a mobile phone with keys on it. Since they're trying to write text, they know the alphabet. And this gave us an idea. What if, instead of looking at the alphabet in this traditional sequential way like this, we break it up at the vowels, which are easily identifiable points, making this a simple task. Then we can use the mobile phone's keys to navigate this alphabet and thus help people enter text efficiently. OK. We call this NAFTAP. And uh, for instance, you can go from A to E and down from E to I and so forth. You can do this in all directions. You can, for instance, go right from I and get to J. You can go left from I and get to H because we've implemented wraparound. You can go from A to Z and back again. Imagine you're a novice user. Still, he's in very proficient with the system. So maybe you're using only two directions to make it easier. To get to the letter T, you'll need to press a key nine times. But once you become an expert in the system, you'll start navigating using all four directions. And by then, you'll only need to press two keys in order to get to T. One up from A to U, and then left to T. So this means 
that there aren't any wrong choices, just longer or shorter passes. The user, if, for instance, he overshoots a letter, will not need to go back and delete, stop entering text. He can just keep on navigating until he reaches that letter again. All roads lead to Rome. Here is a video. Great, did that work. Uh, a video of uh, our system working. Okay. The user is navigating in the way I just described. There is audio feedback from a text-to-speech engine reading out loud the letters and words that are entered. And words are entered after a timeout or a specific key is pressed to make this faster for experienced users. So that gives you an idea of how this works. Let me move on. Uh, thank you. Not good. Okay. So, uh, as you could see, the user started uh, using only two directions, but as he would become more proficient, that would improve. And we went out and tested this, and we got really good results. Uh, okay, look at error rates. The difference between the error rates of uh, NavTap, our approach, and MultiTap, which is the default approach for entering text on mobile phones, uh, is staggering. The users commit much less mistakes using our approach. Also, they write faster. They're uh, able to enter more words per minute, so not only they do quickly, they also do it um, uh, much more correctly. And there's room for improvement, as these were all novice users that had been using our application for, for just three sessions, and it's conceivable that as uh, their experience would uh, increase, they would start navigating using more directions and uh, improving those results. But still, some people had a complaint to make, because Keyboards uh, aren't really. Let's try this again. Okay, keyboards aren't really part of mobile phones nowadays. Most mobile phones, smartphones now have touch screens. So our approach based on a keyboard might not be that good. We thought uh, about this for a minute and immediately realized we really do not need a keyboard. We just need a way for users to specify directions to navigate that alphabet. And they can do that, that just as easily by swiping their finger across the screen. So we uh, created a new prototype where swiping in four directions will allow users to do so, navigate the alphabet, enter text. We called this NavTap, sorry, NavTouch. And we went a step further and used the same idea to allow users to navigate their cell phone menus and make and receive calls send and uh, uh, SMS messages, manage their contacts, and even small applications that we currently use, such as the alarm clock and calculator. Again, we went to test. Eight users participated in this study. Only five got to the end for a variety of reasons. This was an extended study. During uh, 16 weeks, we went regularly every week and interviewed those users. At the onset of the study, the only thing the users were able to do with their mobile phones was to make calls. All other functions weren't available to them. They weren't able to use them. But after those 16 weeks, look at this. They continue to make calls, but they can manage their contacts. They can use SMS messages. They can use their cell phone in a much more complete way, such as uh, the one sighted users uh, uh, usually do. Regarding SMS messages in particular, and remember, none of these users was able to send or read it before. They hadn't done so. But after those 16 weeks, they had sent over 1,800 messages and received 1,200 messages, which is a great result. This made us very happy. Not so fast. Made us very happy. And uh, it shows that we were really able to change things for the better for these users. They're more in touch with others. They can communicate better. And the lesson I would like to leave here that we learn is that uh, we must include the users in all stages of the design process. We must really go out there and get to know those users, get to know their real problems, get to know whether we're really addressing those problems instead of basing ourselves on stereotypes. And if we do that, the sky is the limit. Thank you very much. <laughs>